If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 123. Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease, with the contempt of the proud. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? Uh, that was the very loud good, and it was kind of long one. Good. <laughs> G'day, matey. Going all right? Good. <laughs> very good. We thank the Lord Jesus for another blessed Friday evening, 6 p.m., all the way from Sydney, Australia. I pray all of you are doing good and in, in good spirit as well, for as long as Christ is the living Messiah, we are also living in Him. Amen? Amen. Can't hear you. Amen. Can't hear you. Amen. That's the way. Let's listen to this beautiful hymn, and then we'll come back to our topic of this evening. We thank our Lord. Um, just uh, as um, recent times we started uh, doing the announcements at the beginning, not at the end of the um, lecture. So very quickly we go through the announcements and then we'll come to our topic by the grace of our Lord Jesus. Um, this is for uh, parents that have their children in the Divine Heart Sunday School and those who bring their teenage um, sons and daughters uh, to our Teens for Christ. They are organizing a spiritual camp between the ages of 8 to 16. This is a spiritual camp between the ages of 8 to 16. Mom and Dad, please put your children's name, enroll them in this uh, spiritual camp. It's very vital to, be, uh, to expose our children to such events. Very, very vital. But last week we went to a, a spiritual camp for our youth ministry. Uh, we spent a couple of hours there on a Saturday, and it was absolutely wonderful and magnificent. Uh, all those young men and women there together, having fun in the love of Christ, still socializing, eating, drinking, of course, uh, water and 7-Up. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and then the, the prayer time and the contemplative time it was amazing. It was incredible. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I encourage parents to bring their children and enroll them in when we have these spiritual activities as, as this spiritual camp, ages between 8 and 16. Our next, next youth ministry gathering will be this coming Wednesday, the 7th of August at 6.30 p.m. here at the church's hall. If you are between 18 and 40, and uh, we'll take a couple of years up and down. So if you're 16, 17, 41, 42, 43, we'll round it up and down depending on your age. It's between eight, 18 and 40, our youth ministry. I encourage you, my sons and daughters, to be part of this. It's incredible. We get together, we speak about the Holy Bible, and then we socialize afterwards. So the next gathering, it is fortnightly on a Wednesday, and the next one up is on this Wednesday coming on the 7th of August. If you haven't enrolled, just come on the day, 
7th of August, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., and put your name down and be part of our beautiful youth ministry. The topic will be how our thoughts influence our lives. That will be the topic for that evening, how our thoughts influence our lives. Our youth ministry also hosting a walkathon for this year, happening on the Saturday, the 26th of October. 26th of October, Saturday. It's a walkathon. It's a day open for everyone, families, mom and dad with children in prams. There will be a lot of things prepared for that day. And those who are enrolling to walk those few kilometers to put on weight or lose some weight, whichever way you want to take it, please join us. I'll be your chef for the day and I'll make sure everything I cook is burned to the bone, baby. So it is Saturday, the 26th of October. Encourage our youth. Please do join us for this wonderful walkathon for 2024. Um, this is from the Divine Heart Sunday School, mom and dads. Uh, we are celebrating the Holy Mass service for parents and their beautiful angels in the Divine Heart Sunday School on Saturday, the 17th of August, 10 a.m. sharp. We used to do it at 6 p.m., but we've decided to do it in the morning because we want to also socialize and have fun with our children afterwards while it's still daylight. We don't, we don't want to go out into the darkness of, of this world. We want to come out into the light of Christ. So we decided to bring the Mass, Holy Mass, at 10 a.m. instead of 6 p.m. Saturday, the 17th of August, Mom and Dad, with your beautiful children, do come. This is for you, tailored for you. Our One Jesus International Conference for 2025, this is for 18 and over. We'll be together for five days in the love of Christ. This is a conference, five days nonstop. There will be Holy Mass services, preaching, seminars, um, contemplative prayers, uh, socializing, touring, a lot of things in five days. It is open for everyone within Australia and abroad. Wherever you are, whoever you are, if you're 18 plus, uh, you are more than welcome to join us. It goes for five days from Thursday the 28th of August to Monday 1st of September 2025. Finally, our Good Samaritan Aid Society Overseas Mission, Australia and Overseas. Um, from the bottom of our heart, on behalf of the entire board members of the Good Samaritan Aid Society and my weak person, I would like to thank you to all our beautiful sponsors who have been sponsoring and are continuing to sponsor. May the Lord Jesus bless you always because what you are doing, you have no idea how much impact you are making on so many lives that you don't even know who they are and where they are. But I can assure you, it is making a humongous difference in people's lives and little angel as well. Just very briefly, um, less than a year ago, we started with 12 children in Syria. We started with 12 children in Syria. Now this program also is for Australia. We do also a lot of charities. Last time we went to Chil Westmead's Children's Hospital and we donated a, an, a, a, a sum of money to help uh, everyone who is working there and to encourage them to continue with the beautiful work they do for these little angels at Westmead's Children's Hospital. And we do a lot of other aids as well within Australia. Um, but I can show you also overseas, um, there is about 10 or 11 countries. Uh, we help people in Iraq, Egypt, Kenya, Armenia, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, uh, Turkey, and as we said, Australia. We started less than a year ago with 12 children in Syria. Today, I can say with all glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have around 1,700 people that we sponsor on a monthly basis. 1,700, yep. This 1,700 people uh, is between children, families, widows, elderlies, and refugees. Every month, there is 
monetary value going and also food going to their doorsteps. This is made possible, yes, by the help of everyone who is sponsoring. If you'd like to join this great cause, it is, this is the flyer and there is the barcode, the details are there. Please, I encourage you because that dollar, amazing, about 1,700 people. Wow. We thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. All glory to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only name that is the true divine God, and there is no one else but Him. I want to hear a huge amen. Amen. Oh, what a feeling, Jesus Christ. What Toyota? Well, Toyota invented Corona. Look, um, I didn't want to say this because I didn't want to, like, ruin whatever. Uh, but some people said, Bishop, please mention it. Uh, I don't know. Shall I mention? Okay. Oh, it's about the nonsense that happened at uh, Paris Olympic, whatever. Yeah. Don't mention it. Look, the reason I, I didn't say anything... Because you shouldn't be saying anything to a nothing. Because from the president of that country to the organizers and to those, whatever, they're all nothing. Because when you behave in such a way, according to human morals, and Christian values and morals, you're definitely a nothing. So what do you say to a nothing? Nothing. But, I don't know. If some church has decided to write a letter to show their objection, uh, that letter is nothing. Because you're sending it to a nothing, so your letter is nothing. You, you shouldn't be writing letters to nothing. If you want to write a letter, write it to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and let Him deal with those nothings. And I pray, and I ask the Lord Jesus, the way He dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah, He deals with such behaviors. The way He dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah, likewise you deal with such behaviors. Now, my Lord, my Savior, my God. The world is sick. Yeah? And it's getting sicker and sicker because the only medication for the world is the Lord Jesus. He's the only doctor. So the, because they have denied the true healer, their, their sickness is getting worse and worse. So what is next? You're going to be uh, half animal, half human. What are you going to be? A dog and a cat and in between? Like sick. And if you want to continue with that sickness, leave Christ and Christians alone. But you know what? I don't deal with nothings. So I, I, I call my, my Lord. Daddy, fix him up. So that president of that country and the organizers and those whatever are all nothing. Okay? So I want them to hear this. You guys are nothing. All right? You're nothing. And... You cannot stain the light of the world. You cannot stain the sun of righteousness and healings in its wings. Because when the sun shines on the entire globe, there are places that are filthy like you. And there are places that are clean. But when the sun hits the filthy place, or the filthy place tries to make the sun dirty, you cannot because nothing can stain the sunbeam wherever it hits, whether it's a clean place or a filthy place, because the sun will always be the sun. It is up to you to be enlightened by the sun or to be burned by the sun. When you accept Jesus Christ, He will enlighten you. When you reject Him, you are asking for absolutely nothing but burning judgment. So, Lord, 
Whatever you did to Sodom and Gomorrah, may the same happen to such nothings. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my God. Yeah? I, I feel sorry for these nothings. You know. But the president of France and the organizers of such filth and whatever, all of you are nothing. Okay? Did you hear that? From the good bishop. Good looking one. You're nothing. So what letter? What letter you send? We, reject, we object. It's got a life, you and your letter. I call my Lord. What letter? He'll fix you up. That's why this president, the current president of France, he will not be next elections. He'll be plugged. This is from the Lord Jesus. So next time you don't play with fire, you'll burn yourself. Okay, are you good? <laughs> uh, all right, yes, today's topic, absolutely. Um, we're continuing with our journey in the Song of Solomon or Song of Songs. Today we'll be reading from uh, chapter 1 and verse 3. Chapter 1 and verse 3. Here we go. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 3. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgins love you, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's one verse, and it's going to take us 10 hours. You're not in a rush, are you? Okay. In Arabic, they say, As-sukut alamatur rida. Uh, try and translate that one. Silence is the sign of contentment. They say that when you get married. <laughs> if there is anyone in the crowd that objects to this marriage, you may speak now or keep your silence forever. The, all, the first one that wants to object probably is the groom and the bride. And, well, they have no choice. <laughs> They're stuck now. All right. One verse, again, I'll, we'll read it. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgins love you. Last time, we finished with verse 2. And verse 2, the end of it said this. For your love is better than wine. It's on the screen. For your love is better than wine. And we said... Why is your love better than wine? Because your love made me drunk in you, Lord Jesus. Just like when you drink earthly wine and makes you drunk, your love is, surpasses the earthly wine, surpasses the drunkenness of this worldly wine. Your love made me drunk in your holiness, in your purity. And now she's coming, the bride. She's coming and saying, the reason why your love is better than wine, because I got drunk in your love. And when somebody falls in love, they act as if they are drunk because the head is numb. So your behavior is kind of a weird one. They have, they've noticed you saying things they've never heard from you before and doing things they have never seen you doing it you, you look to them as if you are drunk they will come and ask you are you okay is everything fine with you you're behaving in a weird way your reply be i'm in love baby i'm in love l-o-v-e all capital letters i'm in love poor mom 30 years, she put her life on her son. 30 years at home, she couldn't manage to get him to wash one plate. He gets married. First day, he washes the dishes, not a plate. He washes the dishes, mows the lawn, does the shopping, cooks. And then after 10 hours, he says to his wife, anything else, honey? Poor mom is saying, my son has lost it. 
For your love is better than wine. I am drunk in your love. Why? Because I want to go to the next step, verse 3. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments. I want to enter your fragrance. See, unless I get drunk in your love, I cannot experience your fragrance. Psalm 45, 8. King David is saying about the Lord Jesus, all your garments, not you, your clothing, all your garments are scented with myrrh, aloes, and cassia. All your garments are scented with myrrh, aloes, and cassia. All these are fragrances. Myrrh, aloes, and cassia are forms of fragrances. When somebody dies, a foul smell and odor comes out of them, true or not. So the foul smell symbolizes death. Well, if the foul smell symbolizes death, then what is a pleasant scent symbolize life? King David is saying, from your clothing, all of your garments are what? Are, are scented with myrrh, aloes, and cassia. Beautiful, pleasant smell comes out of your garments, Lord. Comes out of your garments. The bride is saying of the fragrance, meaning pleasant smell. Fragrance symbolizes life. The person is living, not dead. Your love is better than wine. I want to be drunk in your love because I want to smell from you the smell of life. Out of you comes life because all the people that I was attached to, all of them have died, rotted, and foul smell came out of all of them. There is no one that can give me life except you, Lord Jesus. You are the only one that out of his garments, fragrances come out, the smell of life to the one who wishes to seek life. But the people I associated with, the people I hanged around with, the smell of death comes out of them because they are all dead. You are the only living one. In verse 1, or in verse 2, the beginning of it, She's saying, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. God the Father, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth, meaning bring me into your companionship. Join me to you. Make me one in you, Heavenly Father. Make me one in you. Now, in order to come into your companionship, in order to come and be one in you, Lord, how can I achieve this? He is saying, the bride is saying, sorry, thank you for the love of your only begotten son whom you send for me. The only way to come and be one with God the Father, it took his son to die on the cross. It took his son to die on the cross. The love of your son, of your beloved son, that made me drunk. When did he show me his love in its fullness in its perfection on Calvary on the cross this is when the perfect divine love was fully defined illustrated and revealed to the bride ie the church the people who believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth the love of your beloved son that made me drunk in it when he gave me his love on the cross and said this is my blood Take, drink, and be drunk in this divine love. Every time you come to church and attend the Holy Mass service and drink the blood of Christ, you are drinking the love of God. Yes? You are drinking the love of God for you. Don't take it I came just to take the body and the blood. I'm taking the love of God for me. You see, because what made Jesus Christ die on the cross for all of us? Love. 
What makes you sacrifice? Love. Parents, why do you give your life to your children? Because you love them. Your love for them is from the heart to the heart. Genuine, sincere, no hypocrisy, no twisting. It is a genuine, true love. So when you truly love, the first thing you do is you die for the one you love. Sacrifice. So the body and the blood is the love of God for every single person that seeks to be drunk in this love. We see this in verse 2. For your love is better than wine. This is true divine love. Where I sacrifice myself for the one I love the most. And the Lord did it not just with words, but he did it with deeds, with action. He said, I love you, and I'm willing to put my life on the line for you. And he did it. He didn't just say it. He did it. He died literally in the flesh on that cross for every single one of us. Because I want to enter your companionship and be drunk in your love, because you are the only living one. That's why I seek to be one in you. There is no one living but you, Lord Jesus, because you are the only one that out of your garments come myrrh, aloes, and cassia, fragrance, pleasant smell, which represents or symbolizes life. When you come to church during the Holy Mass service, we put the vessel, the censer, and there is incense. Why do we put incense? You have to put your hands on it and make the sign of the cross before you receive the body and the blood of Christ. You see, what precedes the body is the smell. So that incense is the smell of the living body and the life-giving blood. So you are coming before receiving the living body and the life-giving blood, you are receiving the smell of that living body. That smell is beautiful. It is not a foul smell. So the Lord is saying, or the church is saying to you, you are coming to smell the smell of life. You are about to receive the body that will give you life and the blood that will give you life. And this is the smell of that life, the incense. Yeah? There you go. Because you are the only living one, and everyone else whom I was attached to died, rotted, and foul smell came out of them all. You are the only heavenly groom that everyone should be united to. That's what the bride is saying here. You are the only heavenly groom that everyone should be united to because you are the only one who is the living one. Everyone else is dead. And if you attach yourself to the dead, you'll end up dead like them. Why is the world dead? Because they attach to themselves to dead people like themselves. And they end up being dead. The moment we come back to Christ, we receive life. Out of the grave gives us life, my beloveds. Because when I was united to my earthly husband, he died. But when I was united to my heavenly husband, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is the pleasant smell for eternities. The everlasting heavenly groom, the one who lives forever. Because Jesus Christ, my heavenly groom, knows not death. Knows not death. The bride is asking for his fragrance, which is the symbol of life. The bride is asking for these things. In verse 2, at the beginning, let him kiss me. She is saying, bring me into your companionship. Make me one in you and with you. For your love is better than wine. Make me drunk in your love. And because of the fragrance of your good ointments, and revive me with your life. Number one, kiss me. Make me one in you. Number two, for your love is better than wine. Let me be drunk in your love and not that wine of this world let me be drunk in your love when i'm drunk in your love you will give me your fragrances i.e eternal life 
If you don't love Christ, you can't be with him. And if you cannot be with him, there is no life. There is no life. Your scent is pleasant, Lord Jesus, because you did not know sin, you did not do sin. He neither sinned with thought nor with action. Perfect as God, the human side of Christ, the perfect lamb, the perfect human being was like God when it came to sin. He was sinless, sinless. But I and all humanity have sinned. And because of sin and through sin, death entered. And through death, foul smell, rot came out of all of us. When I die, the foul smell comes out. And why did I die? Because I sinned. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23. You are the only Lord Jesus. You are the only sinless one. Even when you descended to Sheol, Hades, pleasant scent fragrance came out of you. Even when he went to Hades, when he died on the cross and the flesh, he went to Hades to release those who were captives by Satan in Hades. Even when he went to Hades, the fragrance, the smell of life was still coming out of Jesus Christ. Our church fathers put it so beautifully with the following words the living one i.e. Jesus Christ the living one descended to the land of the dead and proclaimed good hope to all the captive souls in Sheol or in Hades he went down living he went down living Ephesians 4 8 to 10 St. Paul says therefore he says when he ascended on high and led captivity captive and gave gifts to men now this he ascended what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth since he ascended he must have descended otherwise he wouldn't have ascended so he descended to Hades to take us out of that rot that eternal death to heaven of all heavens and give us eternal life my beloved for your because of the fragrance of your good ointments. Verse 3 continues. Your name is ointment poured forth. Your name is ointment poured forth. Ointment, my beloved, is a very pure oil. A very pure oil. It is all oil. There is no no foreign substances in there nothing it's 100 percent pure oil she is saying your name is ointment pure oil meaning your name is holy your name is pure your name is full of blessings your name is rich oil the purest form of oil or ointment so when the bride says the fragrance of your good ointments she is saying yours is the life and when she says your name is ointment poured forth yours is the authority so look at verse 3 because of the fragrance of your good ointments she's saying yours is the life and your name is ointment poured forth yours is the authority in the fragrance life exists and in the name of Christ all authority exists that was a good one all authority exists this is why when the Lord Jesus spoke he spoke with authority and he gave life as well Sorry for a moment. Is it cold? No? It's good? Okay. So this is why when the Lord Jesus spoke, he spoke with authority and he gave life. Look at this. John chapter 10, verses 28 to 30. Look what the Lord is saying. And I give them eternal life. This is the Lord speaking. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, 
who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand and then he stamp seals it with this statement I and the father are one now this is for everyone who is suspicious of the divinity of Christ because some people say Jesus is not God well he says I and the father are one if Jesus is just a prophet or a good man nobody dares to put themselves before God Jesus did and let me tell you what this is there any prophet of the Old Testament ever dared to say I give them eternal life only Jesus and I give them eternal life John 10 28 I Jesus give them not God I give them who gives life God when Jesus says I give life what is he saying I am God I don't need permission from a higher authority because I am the ultimate supreme authority I am God revealed in the flesh I don't report to no one everybody needs to report to me because I am that I am there is no one else but me Wow I and the father are one Wow one amazing he spoke with authority and he said I give them eternal life eternal life the fragrance that came out of your garments the smell of life and in his name there is authority he spoke with authority he spoke with authority in first John the, this is the epistle of Saint Saint John the beloved first John 5 12 he who has the Son has life he who, ha he who does not have the Son of God does not have life if you have the son you have life but if you don't have the son there is no life in you you're dead spiritually and what is the spiritual death total detachment from the true divine God the biological physical death everybody dies Christians non-Christians but the spiritual death is when the, the when Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior that's when you are spiritually dead and this is what is the true death all about when we are spiritually dead not physically spiritually my beloved your name is authority she is saying when I believe in your name that is the purest form of ointment in this name alone salvation is made possible in this name alone salvation is made possible look at this Acts chapter 4 verse 12 nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved only in Jesus Christ's name because in him there is authority in him there is eternal life he says and things happen we say nothing happens nothing happens my beloved now and the Lord Jesus came in the last days and he said in Matthew 28 18 all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth and then he comes and says I have given you my name we see that in Acts 11 26 and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch Syria who's from Syria show of hands ah there you go Ahlan, Ahlan, Sahla. Syria so they were the disciples of Christ were called Christians for the first time in Antioch Syria and the name Christians where does that come from Christ and what is this name all authority in him lies eternal life in him is all authority so in this name when you receive this name upon yourself you can do anything and everything you are no longer a slave to anyone or anything you are the child of God you descend from the royal family you descend from the royal family Christ we were called Christians he gave us his name so next time if you refer to yourself as Catholic say I am a Christian Catholic not Catholic I am a Christian Catholic because it's the name of Christ that was given to you that surpasses all other names and when you call yourself Orthodox 
you better say I am a Christian Orthodox because the name the Christ that made you who you are no one else are you with me I am Orthodox and a proud one but above all I'm a Christian Orthodox that's the way we should speak don't say I'm Orthodox big deal so I'm a Christian Orthodox I belong to Christ he gave me his name and that name is all authority I can do anything and everything I can step on snakes scorpion Satan and all his foul spirits in the name of Christ that has all authority by that name I crush every other power there is no power greater than the name of Christ this is why my beloved piece of advice don't ever use the name of your Lord in vain don't ever make it an oath or swear in the name of Jesus Christ to your friends to your family members the only time you make an oath when you go to court and I pray you never go to court that's the only place because it's to do with the law it's a different topic in every other aspect of life outside the courtroom you should never ever swear and make an oath in the name of Jesus Christ what did the Lord Jesus say he said you either say yes yes or no no don't ever make an oath because my name is not easily taken my name in it lies all authority in heaven on earth and below it I rule over heaven over earth and even over hell since I crushed Satan on the cross on Calvary the keys of hell are with me not with Satan because I overcame him and I work I overcame him with the flesh not with my divinity with the weakest form with my flesh I crushed his head so the keys are with me that's why I can go to hell and do whatever I want there Satan can't say nothing because the moment he sees Jesus of Nazareth he runs like a little mouse he's the only human that overcame Satan every other human being was taken captive by Satan the only one who put Satan to shame is the crown of glory Jesus the perfect man and in him lies the perfect God Wow he gave us that name and he called us Christians amazing and we cry over materialistic things we cry over nonsense we cry over empty things of this world and when I'm in trouble I lose it who's gonna come to my rescue who's gonna help me who's gonna get me out of this trouble who's gonna fix my problems and your name is Christ's that has all authority next time an advice for all of us when you say Lord Jesus stop at this don't go any further and contemplate just on the name and say I don't need to say anything else since I mentioned the name Lord Jesus all heaven is mine all authority is mine everything else that is of a negative nature is under my foot just by mentioning the name so when you pray the our father I always give this advice it's not about quantity it's about quality don't just say stand there and say our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name amen no our father and stop our father and contemplate what does it mean that God is my daddy you're my daddy you're my daddy meaning I can talk to you whenever I want I don't need an appointment to see my dad 
I don't need permission to speak to my dad. I can see him anytime. I can call him anytime. I can go to him anytime. And the way I am, I don't need to act before my dad. I don't need to fake it before my dad. I don't need to be formal before my dad because he is my dad. I'll go the way I am. Since he's my dad, that means he loves me. He created me. He formed me. He showed me. He shaped me, he molded me, and he gave me his name. He's my dad. I go informally, but with respect, because he's still my dad. I don't call him Mr. Smith. I call him daddy, but I still respect him. I don't need to be that formal. I don't need to ask for so, for so many permissions. I say, dad, I love you. Dad, I'm not happy. Dad. I have sinned. Please forgive me, Dad. Help me to make you proud that you have this son and you have this daughter. Help me, Dad. I don't run away from you. I run to you because you are my shelter. You are my refuge. You are the one who holds all authority in him and all life in him out of the garments of you comes out myrrh aloes and cassia from your clothing the smell of life comes then how much more from your person oh my goodness wow <sighs> clothings are external if out of the external material life comes then how much more out of the depth of your being the heart of God how much life lies in there for me and you we haven't even touched the surface of what Christ can do in our lives the world took the eye but my heavenly daddy can give it back because my daddy is God I believe in the name of Christ and in the name of Christ my eye is fully restored amen finished done deal go to sleep and don't be worried whatever problem you have i beg you i beg you stop whinging about it stop complaining about it stop calling your friends like who wants to be the millionaire <laughs> You have three lifelines. What three lifelines? I have the line of all lines sitting in heaven waiting for me to call him. Always. Not three chances. Every single moment the line is open since he gave his blood on the cross for me and you. So instead of talking to people, complaining to people, whinging to people, arguing with people, come to your heavenly father. Write your name and your problem on a piece of paper and say to the priest, Father, can you please place this paper on the holy altar and pray for me during the holy mass? And keep your silence. When we keep our silence, God speaks. But when we speak, we are not letting God to lead us and guide us. Learn to be more silent and let God do the work for you. Amen. Um, I think the aircon is a little bit cold. I think we need uh, one of those remote controls. When it's a red button, that means it's hot. When it's a blue one, that means it's cold. So in this name, there is all authority. We need, in other words, we need to trust in his holy name. I think it's Saint Faustina that painted when the Lord appeared to her and she, she painted him. And he said, what is, the, what is your signature? He said, he said to her, write, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus is the name. And I need to trust in this name because in this name, all authority and all life lies. If you believe in this name, you have everything. You don't need anything else. Jesus, I trust in you. And this is a biblical verse in the Old Testament. Lord, I trust in you. That is the biblical reference. He is the God of the Bible. So he knows what he has put in his, word, in his book. 
That's why he said, that Lord is Jesus. Now, I'm an Orthodox bishop. I just mentioned a Catholic saint. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, what a feeling. Jesus Christ. Oh, bravo. <laughs> See, the Lebanese are very sharp. They just get it from the word go. We need to trust in the name of the Lord. Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. Unite me to you. Companionship. How was that possible? How did I become united to God? You gave me your beloved son's love on Calvary on the cross. And his love is better than wine. For his love made me drunk in him. And when this love made me drunk, I took the pleasant fragrance of his good ointment. I received eternal life. When I embraced Jesus Christ on the cross, he gave me his love. I got drunk in that love because when I came into this love with Christ, I found out for the first time ever, nobody gets anywhere near the way Christ loves me. Nobody. I thought my mom and dad loved me the most. I thought my wife, my husband, my brother, my sister, my cousin, my best friends who are closer to me than my own brothers. I thought but all was wishful thinking. But the truth will always be the truth. Nobody loves you the way Christ loves you. Nobody. You want your relationship to be healthy? Let that relationship be built on the name of Christ. Love your father through Christ. Love your mother through Christ. Love your husband and wife through Christ. Love your siblings through Christ. Love your relatives and friends through Christ because it is only through Christ everything is healthy only through Christ only through Christ when his love made me drunk I took the pleasant fragrance of his good ointment he gave me eternal life when I received that eternal life his name was written on me his name is all authority given unto me. You can step on snakes and scorpions. And even if you drink the poison of the snakes, nothing will harm you. When Christ's name has engulfed you, when Christ's name has conquered over you, nothing can harm you no matter how much they try. They can kill the flesh, but they can't kill the spirit because the spirit is in the hand of the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No one snatches anything from my father's hand. I and the father are one. He who has the son has life. He who has the son has all authority. In Jesus mighty name, I can say things and they will happen. When you truly believe and trust in the power hidden in this holy name. When you truly believe. Not just say it, but you need to live it. Live it. When you invoke the name Christ, you need to be swimming in that name. Imber Im submerged in that name. Submerged fully. Engulfed by that name. Let that name enter every single fiber of your being. Verse 3 continues, therefore the virgins love you. You know, some people say that the Song of Songs or Song of Solomon is an earthly love between a guy and a girl. And these words are not appropriate to be called or to be placed as part of the Holy Bible. You have no idea what you're talking about, my dear friend. Because in this particular verse, I can show you it's not an earthly love between a guy and a girl. Why? Because the bride is saying to her groom, the wife is saying to her husband, therefore the virgins love you. You, my beautiful daughters who are married, 
Would you ever go to your husband and say, all the girls love you? Would you ever say that? Man, if you find out just a smell from a distance, oh, mm, different fragrance, I buy you Versace, Chanel, what is this? If you just smell a girl's whatever smell, you will shred your husband, wouldn't you? So this is not earthly love. The bride cannot go to her husband and say, well done, hubby, all the virgins love you. <laughs> what kind of a wife is that? Not much up there. Anyway, it's a different love. From this we can see, it's a proof. It's not about an earthly man loving or falling in love with an earthly girl. This is divine love. God's love given to humanity. The, the, the purest form of love you could ever come across. So if we are still living in this earth, our minds are filthy. We need to purify them and come out of the filth and the mud of this earth and elevate yourself to the heavens where you become pure to understand the language of purity and sincerity. Divine love. Well, therefore the virgins love you. Your love made me drunk. Pure, genuine love. Your pleasant fragrance gave me life. In Luke 15, the prodigal son, when he came back from that far, that city that he went to far away, what did his father do? He put on a new garment. Do you realize? Now I'm talking about the garment. Why did he put on the new garment? Who is this new garment? The garment of the son. Psalm 45, 8, and from the garments come out myrrh, aloes, and cassia. He put on the garment of his beloved son on that prodigal son, meaning the fragrance of life. You were living in a faraway city. You were living in sin, in death. I brought you out and I put on the garment of my beloved son, which you received through the holy baptism. When we baptize that baby or an adult, what do we dress him up with? White. White dress. What is white? This is the garment of Christ. Righteousness. The smell of life. Because this is the dress for the eternal life. So the garment represents eternal life. And that garment we receive through the sacrament of the holy baptism. And what is holy baptism? I am crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, and resurrected in Christ. It is crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. So through the Son's sacrifice, I received the garment of fragrances, eternal life. Baptism is born again, giving you a new life from above. Eternal one, not temporal. A spiritual birth. One day we'll talk about baptism. It's a deep topic, very deep topic. Christ covered us with the fragrance of his good ointment when he dressed, dressed us up with that white garment. See, in, in our church here, when a baby is baptized, or even an adult, doesn't matter, both are acceptable. <laughs> but when we baptize that baby, we, they, we dress them up in white and we put what we call a crown. And that crown is made out of two strings, or uh, two strings, one white and one red. One white and one red. See, the white represents the divinity of Christ and the red represents the humanity of Christ. Because when God became man, that unity between divinity and humanity is called the person of Christ. So Christ is perfect God, white ring, white string, and Christ is perfect man, red string. Now, divinity united to humanity gave me the fragrance of life, eternal life. I was born again through the sacrament of baptism, 
and the dress of the baptismal uh, sacrament is white righteousness holiness the dress of eternal life of heaven of heaven how was I dressed up in this fragrance because his love on the cross made me drunk my beloved by his death on the cross covered me with the dress of heaven eternal life Psalm 45 8 all your garments are scented with myrrh aloes and cassia when he dressed me up with himself he gave me his name you who have been baptized into Christ put on the Christ Galatians 3 27 you who have been baptized into Christ put on the Christ who is the Christ that garment that eternal life the smell of life the fragrances which are eternal life so when he covered me with himself he gave me his name he gave me his name and with his name I step on everything and conquer every other power fear nothing fear no one but love everyone but fear no one love everyone but fear no one so when they behave in a foolish way you can call them out even if that person is a president I'll say the way you behaved just proves you're nothing but I'll pray for you that by the mercy of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he makes you one day and soon enough something out of nothing you know I said the Western world has lost touch of the true divine Christ atheism has engulfed Europe a lot of churches are nothing but empty buildings and they are becoming just a monument and they are converted to God knows what other things so I said I've been to France many years ago even in the villages where you could see there is about five eight houses there was at least one or two small churches for eight houses one or two small churches and at the entry of every village there is a cross but at the moment they're nothing but empty and all of Europe look at Germany look at Sweden look at all of Europe what is happening maybe take Spain out of it because there is still faith there and it's but it's shaky but Europe in general have walked away from Christ that's why they've lost authority because it's not your weapons that protect you it is Christ who is the protector if you need your nation to be saved if you need your nation to be healthy if you need your nation to be wealthy make sure Christ is your King your Lord and Savior it is not that nuclear warheads that will make you a superpower my dear friends it is Christ who makes you powerful because in the name of Christ all authority lies all authority my goodness we hang on to superpower nations to gain power and then to what to inherit this land and what is this land as the end for every human being a graveyard isn't that foolish they call themselves wise but the wise the wisest people of this world are absolute fools they chase nothing they end up nothing they chase a world which at the end is nothing but a graveyard Wow amazing when you chase Christ that grave is empty you're not dead you live in the one who is the life giver you live in him my beloved you live in him amen, amen. therefore the virgins love you who are the virgins virgins are all the faithfuls who are always ready for the Lord Jesus virgins is not those who are not married yeah no they're not this is here it's not the virgins not that the virgins here meaning every Christian soul that is always prepared awaiting Christ 
to be called to him anytime are you ready if the Lord calls you now have you done your diligent duty are you ready to go if the Lord says Bishop your time is up am I ready I don't know so who are the virgins the virgins are the ones who say to the Lord take me I am ready to be taken because the world and all of its pleasures and treasures for me is nothing but a tip I stepped on the honey of this world to gain Christ my only portion the virgins my beloved are the saints are the saints who are always in deep love with Christ true divine love they were drunk in his love that's why the saints were seen as drunk people in the eyes of the world they are a bunch of fools and losers why would you leave a mansion why would you leave your position why would you leave all the wealth and the health and the pre prestigious life and go and live in the crevices of the mountains and in the wilderness of this world why would you do that and eat nothing but grass like an animal they don't understand when you are in deep love with your loved one you will do crazy things but unless you are in that love you'll never understand why I am behaving in this way why I am behaving in this way when somebody comes and says there is no saints seriously There is a hymn written about Saint Charbel. And in that hymn, there is one statement that says, He was drunk in God. He was drunk in God. So biblical, so biblical, so relevant. But to so many people, Saint Charbel was seen as someone who has lost it. Why would you live like that in total isolation? You don't eat, you don't sleep, no rest, no comfort. You know, his pillow was a log, a tree log. A tree log was his pillow. He used to sleep on concrete, naked concrete. And in Lebanon, temperatures can be extremely harsh. It snows where Saint Charbel lived it snows below zero freezing temperatures he had nothing but he had God so he had everything and then people say why are you talking about Saint Charbel well it's not me it's God you see, when, when, when somebody gives his life for God in this way, God will reward. You see, the glory, the honor is not man-made. It is God-given gift. And this is only made possible when your love is so immense, is so deep for Christ. When you become drunk in the love of Christ, you will move mountains. God will do wonders through you because what goes around comes around. Love is a two-way. He will say, Sharbel, you were faithful, you were loyal to me, you gave your life, your comfort, everything for Christ, and today Christ gives himself for you. I'll make sure the world hears about you. You went and hid in a mountain. You isolated yourself from people. Today I'll make the world come and know you. This is the reward when we give our life for the Lord Jesus. I will honor those who honor me, says the Lord. I will honor those who honor me. You know, I know saints exist and they are the living ones. I'm the dead. 
No one can tell me there's no sins. Listen, they came and spoke to me, right? I know. I don't just believe, I know. I know. I know. You know why they are living? Because they have the name of Christ on them. And for as long as Christ lives, they will always live. They will always live. Because they trusted in this holy name. They trusted in this holy name. Virgins who denied everything for Christ's sake. Look at Hebrew 11.38. Look what the Holy Bible is saying about such saints who denied everything for the Lord's sake. Hebrew 11.38. And of whom, of whom is talking about the saints, the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth, of whom the world was not worthy. They were so holy, this world is not worthy of having them here. The world is not worthy of having such saints walked on the face of this earth. How much God honored them. The Holy Bible is saying it, not me. It's talking about who? They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And you're telling me there is no monks? There is no monastic life? So what do you say to Hebrew 11.38 then? They lived in the deserts, in the dens and the caves of this earth. This is biblical. These are the virgins who gave everything for Christ's sake. Gave everything. How would I not die for the Lord? The virgins gave up on everything for the Lord's sake, including themselves. For all that He has done for us on Calvary on the cross, what can we give back to Him, I the unworthy? Nothing. No matter how much I sacrifice, no matter how much I give, it is absolutely zero to what Christ has done for all of us. Absolutely zero. Yet the Lord never forgets that cold cup of water. He never forgets it. When you give from the heart, that's when the Lord never forgets it. And I've told you about the cup of cold cup of water in the olden days there was no electricity there was no fridges they had this terracotta big jars they would fill it with water and during the night especially midnight 1 a.m. 2 a.m. 3 a.m. the temperature drops and becomes very cold the water seeps through that terracotta jar they would put a cup beneath it and it would drip a drop at a time all night long to fill that cup, it took all night long to fill that cup. So this water is the coldest, is the purest of the entire water inside that terracotta jar. When somebody knocks at your door and says, I'm thirsty, if you give him that cold water, I tell you, I will never forget it for you. Because you gave him from the best of the best that you had, not from the least of the least. From the best. So when you see somebody hungry, don't open your wallet and start looking through which is the smallest note. The Lord said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That means when you come to give, use one hand, to not two hands. Don't let the left interfere with the right. So when you open the wallet, just speak. If you use both hands, you will flip. But if you use one hand, you have no choice but to. And imagine the green one comes out, the $100 note. Uh, my heart broke my spine is gone I was gonna strangle that poor guy listen mate the hundred dollars is your portion take it I went all night fuming volcano about to erupt no family member could get anywhere near me because anybody spoke, I would have snapped at them. 
I will never use one hand, Lord Jesus, again. <laughs> no, you better use one hand. And you better give the best of the best. The best of the best. When you do that for the Lord, you give Him the most precious thing you have. And what is the most precious thing we have? The Spirit. In a marathon, when you come first, they give you gold. When you come second, they give you silver. When you come third, they give you bronze. Anything after that, good luck. Bronze is your body. Silver is your soul. Gold is your spirit, the most expensive. So you need to give him all of you. You need to give him all of you. And say, Lord, take it. Do as you wish. As long as you're happy, Lord. Do as you please. Because I'm nothing but a vessel in your hand. And you've put the most precious thing in this terracotta vessel, your image. You have imprinted your image on this coin. Give, render what is Caesar's to Caesar, and render what is God's to God. Since the image of Caesar is on the coin, you've realized the coin belongs to Caesar. Why haven't you realized whose image is, is imprinted on you? Isn't it God's? Let us go down and make man in our image according to our likeness. I have imprinted my image on you. Then render what is God's to God and render what is Caesar's to Caesar. I am not after your pockets. I'm after your hearts. Your hearts. Don't make it a big deal that you've donated to the church. Take it as a blessing because I've allowed you to donate to my house. I am the richest of all. I am God. I don't need your money. Before I created you, I put gold in the earth and I put precious pearls in the heart of the oceans. Who do you think you are? To come and say, I've done this for you, God. You've done nothing. The only thing you've done for me is you've given me the crown of thorns, your sins, and you nailed me on the cross. But I accepted it because I love you. And I came to give you this love, to make you drunk in my love, to give you my fragrance, to give you eternal life through my precious blood that I shed on Calvary for you. And when I gave you my fragrance, eternal life, I dressed you up with the garment, and then I gave you my name. My name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All authority has been given unto me. And whoever believes and trusts in this name has that authority. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is better than wine. Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgins love you. People gave up their life for the Lord. Now they are saints. From sinners to saints. This is God. Jesus Christ, and I'll leave you with this definitely. When you come or people come to compare Jesus Christ to any other religious figure, political, whatever. There is no comparison, but I'll go along with you for a short moment. If you want to compare Jesus Christ with any other religious figure with all love and respect, I'll say the following. All the religious figures of the world, all the religious figures, the ultimate that they could have achieved ever in their entire life, was to change a bad person into a good person. Maybe they brought some good morals, ethics, values, principles, and the ultimate they could have achieved can't go any further. Turning, changing a bad person into a good person. The Lord Jesus did not come to change a bad person into a good person. The Lord Jesus came to change a dead person into a living one. In this, there is no comparison. No one gets anywhere near Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord didn't say, I came to make you good. The Lord said, I came to make you living one. Because sin killed you. You are dead. I came to revive you, to resurrect you, give you eternal life. This is Christ in the making. He came to change the dead into the living ones. In this, there is no comparison. Nobody dared to say, if you believe in me, even if you die, you will live. Jesus said it. Nobody dared to say, if you take my body and drink my blood, you will live in me forever. Jesus said it. And we read it in John, in John earlier. 
John 10, and I give them eternal life. John 10, 28, and I give them eternal life. Whoever dared to claim this kind of authority? Only Jesus. Because he is God. He can do it. He has the power, the authority, and he has the eternal life. Because he has it, he gave it. He was able to give it. Build a relationship with Christ. Mom and dad, husband and wife, family, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, turn your homes into a church. Turn your homes into a church. Turn your homes into a church. Let Christ be the head of that household. Let Christ be the king ruling over every family member in that household. Let Christ be the head of the husband, the wife, the father, the mother, the sons, the daughters, the everyone. Let Christ be, I beg of you. Then you will see the change in your life happening. Then you will see the change. Christ is not a myth. Christ is not a story to be told. Christ is not a song to be sang. Christ is life. You must live it. And if you don't, you have no life. Turn your homes into a church. When has it been the husband and wife prayed together, knelt before the Lord and prayed together? When has it been? Thanking the Lord for whatever you have, being content with what you have, and enough complaints and whinging. When has it been? Look what has become of us. Look at what the, what the world has done to all of us, brainwashed humanity into destruction. Absolute destruction and total destruction. We became worshippers of false gods, materialism. Materialism has engulfed our life. All we think of how I look, what I eat, in what kind of a house I live, what kind of a car I drive, what kind of a clothes I have, gold, pearls, diamonds. What is this sickness and the filth of this world? Where is the love? Where is the family bond? I'll leave you with this. I've said it and I'll say it again. The Western world has succeeded, has succeeded immensely in giving value to everything. But the Western world has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The Western world has succeeded immensely in giving value to everything. But they have failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. But the problem is, unless you find out what the purpose of the thing, you will never be able to give it value. What is the value of the human being? Human rights. What is the purpose of the human being? The right to be a human, not human rights. So see what human rights done in Paris Olympics? A bunch of jokers, a bunch of nothing, nothing. You see, because when we have forgotten about the purpose of the human, we abused the human. If you don't know the purpose, you can never put it value. Therefore, when you go to the value only, you will abuse the thing 100%. For someone to come and say, born as a male and says, no, I'm a female. What do you call this? And for someone to say, I'm neither a male nor a female, I'm an in-between. And someone I heard in Japan wants to be a dog. You see, we have abused the value of the human being because we lost track of the purpose, the right to be a human, not human rights. And to know and find out what the right of the human is, 
you need to go back to your origin and your origin is in Genesis 1 1 in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth and this Elohim is Jesus Christ of Nazareth along with his heavenly father and the Holy Spirit the Holy Trinity is Elohim unless you go back to your creator you will never know what your purpose is and until you don't and until you find what that purpose is you will keep on abusing the value of the human we chase human rights and we speak about freedom and democracy the only thing that brought us into absolute and ultimate slavery is freedom and democracy chased by human rights <laughs> United Nations the biggest joke ever invented by Satan the biggest joke is the United Nations Satan invention because all they speak about there is human rights the Western world destroyed the purpose of the human what is the purpose of a human family family what is the family gone with the wind all you hear them talk about you're 16 you're 18 you can do whatever you don't want to live at home the government will help you call triple zero and will put your dad in a cage children if your dad or your mom touches you you let us know we'll grab him and now in America California they passed the law these sickos sick in the head a child can be approached by the teacher and the teacher says to the child you're a boy you don't like it you can be a girl without parents consent how sick and low have they become and you want America to remain superpower the Lord will bring it down on its knees and will make fun of America before the whole world and the Lord put a president in the White House who forgets his name to say to the people of America just like your president forgets his name you have forgotten my you have forgotten my name my name is Jesus Christ what have you done with my name your superpower I'll make fun of you to make sure that next time you learn your lesson your power is not because of you it's because of me I Jesus Christ And I say this to Mr. Trump and I want this message to get to his ears yeah, I send it to him Mr. Trump if you don't hold on to Jesus Christ of Nazareth you cannot do anything it's too late it's too late it's too late and what happened with that assassination attempt when they said it was it was divine intervention you should say not I guess you should say definitely was the Lord Jesus that's how you should talk I was not happy with I guess you need to speak boldly you need to speak firm because you 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 belong to the king of kings what are you afraid of people won't vote for you listen everyone is in the hand of Christ everyone when you give your life for Christ the Lord will make sure everybody bows before you but if you become a hypocrite thinking that I'm gonna win some votes here and some votes there and I'll start talking nonsense Christ will not be happy it was the Lord Jesus who saved you and it is your last chance my dear President Trump to be with the Lord give America to Jesus Christ and please next time when you're in the White House by the grace of the Lord Jesus when you stand and address the nation don't say God bless America say Jesus Christ who is God revealed in the flesh in the flesh bless America you need to specify which God And you don't bring anyone else to say a prayer reaching out to their own false gods when you have the true divine God there is no place for other false gods
There is no place. God is one. Can't be two, three, four, and five. There is only one way to God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Period. Period. So if you think all, all roads leads, lead to Rome, that's a, that's a worldly jargon. There's only one way that leads to God. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's no other one. No other one. No Abrahamic faith. No nonsense. No one comes anywhere Jesus Christ. With all love and respect to our father Abraham. He is the father of faith. But he is the servant and the handmaid of God. Who is Christ Jesus. The only one is Jesus. There's no one else. So... America will remain a superpower when Jesus Christ is made king over it. And if I be the president, you know what I'll do? I will, I don't care what, uh, what law. I'll grab these so-called governors who are talking nonsense, but I'll throw them in the Pacific Ocean. Because California is right, very close to the Pacific, it's right at the Pacific Ocean, you know. I'll just grab that governor, whoever that is, and just throw him in the Pacific Ocean. Uh-oh, next time I go to America, they're going to put an X on me. <laughs> I love it. Enough of this nonsense. You go to a child and you say, if you want to change, you can, without parents' consent. Man, I'll bury that governor. I'll bury him. You son of a snake. Broods of fiber. Sick. Be drunk in the love of Christ. Don't be drunk by the poison of the snake, Satan. Please, I beg you. No dark alleys. No late nights, baby. No white powder. No star city. No, no. Drink water. Why do you need scotch on the rock? Drink water. It's very healthy for you. Huh? No clubs. No pubs. No clubbing. Come to the, to the White House, the church. That's the White House. There is no other White House but the church, the house of the Lord. That's the only white. Everything else is black. They can paint it white. Who, get, who cares? It's not about painting. It's about the heart. It's about the heart. The pain fades. But when the heart is renewed by God, never, never, never fades away. Never. I know I spoke a lot. Man, and every time I do that, I'm so glad. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. Okay, keep going. <laughs> All right, our topic for tonight is... <laughs> See, when you read the Holy Bible, like one verse, we've been talking over an hour and a half, or about, about an hour and a half, one verse. So we need, we need to come to understand how the Holy Bible talks. Family, when has it been the last time you've read the Holy Bible together? Please, turn your homes into a church. Especially the man, my son, my son. God, the Lord Jesus, blesses the house through the man, not through the woman. This is God's way. No hard feelings. God blesses the house through the man, not through the woman. Who created, who did, who did God create first? Adam, the man. He said to Adam, you need to be in my presence, in my holy presence, because when you are in my holy presence, I'll bless your wife, I'll bless your children. The man needs to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus, because when the man is the whole family, the Lord will make sure it is. And when they try, when they try to go outside of his jurisdiction, the Lord will reprimand them. When the man is, has given his heart to the Lord, his family is for the Lord. It's for the Lord. My son, when you go to church, 
take your wife and your children with you. When you're at home, pray and make sure your wife is on your right hand and your children on your left hand with you. And when you eat, put them on the table all. Put them at the table and make sure you thank God before you, before you eat. And my dear daughter, if your husband isn't there for you, make sure Jesus Christ is there for you. He is your man that never fails you. And always pray the Lord touches the heart. Don't ever lose hope. And if your husband has gone and left you by yourself, Christ never. He's always with you. And he strengthens you all the time. But if you are living together, please, my son, you are the head of the house. You need to lead. You need to show your wife and the children the way to Christ. The Lord awaits you, my son. Awaits you, my son. Turn your homes into a church. Please, I beg you. Let's hear another hymn and then we'll... Uh, Say the finale prayer.